Hi, my name is Tara Graham, and I'm a professional newborn and family photographer in Oshawa, Ontario, Canada. I've put together a few tips to help you take beautiful images of your newborn baby in your own home. Now, images in your home are going to look a little bit different than a professional newborn studio setting, so this isn't meant to replace or replicate a session with a professional newborn photographer, but just to give you some tips and tricks and some ideas to try out around your house. We're going to look at exposure settings, whether you're using a DSLR or your mobile phone. There are apps that you can download to give you more control over that. We'll also look a little bit at safety, finding the good light, a couple of wrapping techniques, and even a pose that you can do with siblings as well. Since I don't have a newborn myself, we'll be demonstrating most of this with my son's newborn baby doll, and my son will even make an appearance as well. At the end, I'll give you some extra resources in case you want to learn more. And of course, you can post in the Facebook group and also please post your images that you're taking. We'd love to see them. Please share with any friends that are having babies. Thanks so much. Enjoy. There are three settings that are going to affect your exposure. Your aperture or f-stop, your shutter speed, and your ISO. Aperture you can see is the actual width of the opening of your shutter when you're taking your picture. At f32, the opening is very small and everything in your image is going to be very sharp. At f1.4, your background gets quite blurry, but you can still maintain focus on the subject of your image. For shutter speed, the faster your shutter speed, the more motion you're going to freeze. We also want to avoid camera shake, so sticking with a shutter speed of at least 1 1 25th of a second will help you to avoid any blur in your images. For ISO, think of that like the film days where we used to shoot ISO 100 outside on a bright sunny day, and we'd go up to ISO 400 or 800 when we were shooting indoors. These days, the digital cameras are getting so good at dealing with the digital grain, which we call noise, that you can actually increase your ISO quite significantly without noticing a decrease in quality. These three settings work in harmony with each other. So if you have a perfect exposure set and you wanted to increase your shutter speed to stop motion, you'd also have to adapt by changing your ISO or your aperture in order to compensate and maintain that perfect exposure. If you're comfortable with all of these settings, you can shoot in manual on your DSLR, which is the M. And that allows you to control all three of those settings to get the exposure that you want and the look that you want. If you're not totally comfortable with all of those, you can set to aperture priority or shutter speed priority. Check your camera manual. If you're not using Canon, then these abbreviations might be different. You can also set to program mode and that will choose all of the options for you. Personally, I like to have a little bit more control than that. So if I'm not using manual, I will either choose aperture or shutter speed priority, depending on what I'm doing. For indoor baby photos like we're doing today, shutter priority is a good one because we don't want our shutter speed to fall below a certain amount or we're going to start to see some camera shake. We can't hold our hands perfectly still unless you're using a tripod or you're able to brace yourself. So I always recommend shooting at at least 1 1 25th of a second. Today I'm at 1 1 60th of a second. And you can even go up higher, especially if you're feeling like you might be a little bit shaky. When you see images that have those nice blurry backgrounds, that's with a wide aperture. So we could set our camera to aperture priority, AV here on my Canon, and that allows me to change my aperture. So the smaller the number, the wider the opening, and that's going to give me that nice background blur. As I go up with my aperture, I'm not going to get as much blur in the background and everything's going to be a lot sharper and crisper in the background. So with this lens, I can actually go down to 1.4. Depending on the lens that you have, yours might stop at 2.8 or maybe even 4.0 or 5.6, depending on which lens you have and its settings. But going down as low as you can with your aperture, aperture priority will give you creamier backgrounds. Let's talk a little bit about baby safety. Now we aren't trying to replicate a professional studio newborn session here, so let's stay away from the buckets and the bowls and the bed props and all the little things that look adorable but take a lot of practice to be able to use properly. We're just looking for some natural, gorgeous images of your baby in your home. 
the very first thing I'm going to recommend is that you use your camera strap. I have a hand strap here on my camera, but your camera comes with a neck strap. Make sure that that's attached, that it's secure, and that you're using it every time. Put it over your head, especially if you're standing above baby and getting pictures looking down. Very important that you make sure that your camera is secure. Anytime you're placing baby somewhere that they could roll, like off a bed or couch or anything similar, just make sure that you have a spotter. Whether it's your partner or a sibling that's old enough to understand and be able to watch the baby properly, make sure you have a spotter. Otherwise, just, just don't do that. Just don't put your baby in harm's way. Use some common sense and just make sure that your baby's safe at all times. Let's talk about lighting. For lighting, we want to look for a nice soft light, indirect, not direct sunlight coming through your window. We want to turn off the overhead lights so that we don't get that orange glow coming down from above and just use the natural daylight. In this room, we have the cellular shade over the window, which provides perfect diffusion, but you could even open that up and just use window light on an overcast day or once the suns are on the other side of the house. It's perfect. So when I'm photographing <laughs> in the crib, my buddy, <laughs> in the crib, let's pretend that this is still a crib with four sides on it. Normally we'd put baby down here with their head at the wall. However, you can see that the light on baby's face is kind of coming up from above, or sorry, up from below. And it's not really the most flattering. Watch what happens when we turn baby around the other way. Then suddenly the light's coming from above, just like natural sunlight does, and that's how we're used to looking at people. And that's gonna be the most flattering light for your photos as well. So when I used to lay my son down for naps, if I knew I wanted to take pictures of him, I'd actually put him down this way in the crib. If you don't have a window that already has shears or a nice soft shade on it like mine does, you can always throw up a white sheet or anything that's sort of see-through, translucent, that'll give you that nice soft light to work with, or like I mentioned, you can wait until you have an overcast day or until the sun's around the other side of your house so the sunlight isn't coming directly through the window. Having a nice soft light to work with is going to make your images look soft and creamy and beautiful and just so cute. Okay, I'm going to show you a couple different ways that we can wrap baby now. So the first one is going to be using your traditional receiving blanket. And I like to wrap baby on my lap. I find it easy to kind of maneuver the blankets around and underneath. So I'm going to just set baby aside here for a second. With a traditional swaddle wrap, you're going to take your square blanket and fold the one corner down. So this is going to be like a, a sleep swaddle that you'd do with a regular newborn when you're swaddling them for bed. We can do it a little bit tighter since we're doing this for posing and we're not going to leave them in this position long term. So this baby's arms are very difficult to work with and this baby's a little bit smaller than a regular newborn would be, but we're going to do the best we can here. So I like to have baby's hands out. So I'm just going to kind of crisscross them in front for now and we'll deal with that afterwards. So I'm coming down across the shoulder and under the hip and tucking that underneath. And then coming from the bottom, I'm going to gather up all this material and we're just going to bring it up and do a little tuck under the other shoulder. And then we're going to bring our other top side down. So we're creating this nice crisscross in the front here. Put it across like that. And we're going to wrap that all the way around. And with this baby, we're going to have a lot of excess material because he's pretty tiny. So we can just tuck that kind of up underneath and move it around as needed for whatever position we have baby in for the photos. So there we go. Baby's nicely wrapped. Got a little crisscross. We can work with the hands, do them either up beside baby's cheek or kind of crisscrossed in front like this is super cute. And obviously this is all going to work better if your baby is asleep. So keep that in mind. You might not be able to control where baby's hands are if they're awake. There we go. Now I'm going to show you how I'd build up that shot. So this is in the crib. I've got a pillow there for baby's head. If your swaddle blankets are your pretty ones, you can throw an uglier blanket down. This one happens to be pretty cute too, but 
You can use an ugly blanket underneath and you won't see it. We're just going to kind of build this up and make a little nest for baby. Baby's bum is going to be right about here and their head on the pillow. So we're just kind of fluffing that up a little bit around. And I could place baby right there on this blanket, but let's pretend that we are using our swaddle blankets because they are cuter. And same kind of thing, I'm just going to fluff it up again. I like to work with the imperfection rather than trying to get everything smooth and perfect. The texture actually adds some interest to the image as well. So now we're going to bring in our baby who's all wrapped up. I'm going to make sure that that extra material is kind of tucked in underneath. Baby's head is on the pillow. Super cute. We can kind of bring this in around them for extra support. Awesome. So now when I'm taking pictures here, let me shift that up a little bit. We're going to do a full length, horizontal and vertical. I'm going to do a close up of baby's face. And we can start doing super close ups now of eyelashes and lips and hands and toes. Come in here and get a profile shot. So really take advantage while baby's in this position and work your angles. See what you can get. I also love taking a picture of the top of baby's head. I'm gonna come around the back here and do that. This pose is also super cute with baby lying on their side. We've got a lot of extra wrap here with our baby because she's so tiny or he's so tiny. But we can get a side profile pic this way and then come around and get one from the front. Another great one to do while baby is lying here are finger and toe photos. You might need somebody to help you with this. You might be able to do it yourself. But if you can just get baby to grab onto your finger, that's a super cute shot with baby's tiny little fingernails over your finger. Love that one. And we can also get toes together. For this one, you can either cut baby's feet like this and take a cute little picture, or you can kind of just pose the feet together if baby's not kicking too much and get a shot that way with sort of the rest of baby out of focus in the background, that'll look super cute too. Or if baby's kind of more on their side, we can get a photo of the toes like this, which I love. I'll grab a quick one like that to show you. So make sure you're getting all baby's details. I like to get photos of the ears as well, if it's my own baby especially. My son was born with two very different looking ears, so I wanted to document that. So here we have baby on parent's bed. And if your lighting works out, I really love this kind of shot where baby's at the end of the bed. And you kind of take the photo from about here. The lighting in my room is not ideal for this, so I'm gonna show you how I would set up for a shot in here instead. So you can see I've angled baby more towards the window. And we're gonna take a shot more from this angle where the light looks better on baby's face and we can get a straight on shot like this. We can do a profile. We can get in nice and close. If baby's awake and they happen to be stretching their arms out, even better. I love baby awake, stretchy arm shots, arms up above their head. Super cute. Make sure you get that. If they yawn, even better. We love baby yawns, sneezes, anything you can get. If baby's awake and moving, you also want to be using burst mode on your phone. Your camera's probably gonna catch things a little bit faster, but with your phone, use the burst mode to make sure that you get that perfect shot. You can also have your partner assist you and have them do this cute little sneak through the doorway shot here. Perfect for when you're feeding baby or just having snuggles. Have them shoot through the doorway, do a couple different poses, and then even have them come in a little bit closer to get a close up of baby in your arms. I'm going to do sibling posing now. So I just threw a pillow down on the floor and a blanket over top. We've got our toddler in a, a neutral colored shirt without any cars or Paw Patrol on it. I'm just going to bring the toddler's arm out like this. And we're going to place baby right here. We want to have somebody that's available to watch the baby because toddlers are only going to last about 0.5 seconds before they're out of here. Hopefully we get a shot here today. Good, nice little snuggle. And then I'm going to come above. And snap a little picture. Can you give me a smile? 
<laughs> Give me a smile. Can you look at the camera? <laughs> hold on, hold on. That's why we want to spot her. And I'm going to have you give baby a little kiss, okay? A little snuggle, a little kiss. Oh, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Just a gentle kiss. Gentle kiss on baby's head. Just a little gentle kiss on baby's head. No, no. <laughs> gentle kiss. <laughs> okay. I've put together a few tips to help you take take the boo boo ba ba boo 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 ba ba boo boo ba ba <laughs> All right. All right, baby. I'll take your hat off. Mama, I took his hat off. Yeah, I see. Baby kiss. <laughs> <laughs>